Yeah, so hello everybody. My name is Shola Abulu. I'm the principal consultant of Shola Abulu and Associates. We are a strategy and communications training and consulting firm. We are committed to enabling businesses, brands, organizations, and institutions to achieve their desired objectives th through the use of strategic communication, organizational effectiveness, and reputation risk management. So um, this is part of our training arm. We still have our consulting arm where we sort of like work with clients and help them problem solve through challenges that they have in their business and their organization. But this is part of SA and A learning. If this is your first time here, please subscribe so that you can be notified when we have new videos coming up. Um, we do have courses that we run, you know, um, paid courses that we run as well. And you can see the sign up button here, but then we also do have this YouTube channel where we just push out content, short videos that people can sort of like, you know, um, look through and get a sense of certain aspects of communications. And if you have any ideas or questions that you want a topic that you want us to treat in the videos, please write it in the comments as well. We are always looking for that so that we can do things that are um, content that is relevant for you. So some of these topics, I've picked them based on comments and questions that I have seen you know, in the process of running courses and trainings for people or even in my consulting um, life, I would say. And this video is supposed to be 20 minutes, just looking to time myself to make sure that I don't go over. And so let's see how that goes. It's very short, just one slide. So yeah, you can just look through this. Um, so this question, you know, people always talk about, you know, communications professionals and, you know, people say they want to sit at the table and all of that. And I had a conversation with some of my colleagues recently, actually a coaching session that is on the back of one of our courses, the courses we, the course we had in November, because for all of our courses, once people go through the courses, there's also a coaching element which happens afterwards. People can then join optionally. We do about three or four hours over a three month period. So the second coaching session held last week, Thursday, and um, we had, you know, some questions came up. And one thing that always comes up in every meeting I have with communications professionals is this issue about the need to be assertive, the need to be able to, you know, do things a certain kind of way. Initially, I wanted this title to talk about the fact that I felt that all communication professionals needed to be assertive. But then I realized that if you are still early in the organization, it may be difficult for you to exert the kind of level of assertion that I'm talking about because you cannot be assertive when you are still a trainee. You cannot be assertive when you are still learning. You still don't know your right from your left, you know what I mean? So I think once you get to the level of what you can call skilled slash highly skilled, if we're looking at um, skills from the level of awareness, knowledge, skill, and mastery, so four levels. So if you are on the like third level, which is where you say you are skilled, skilled slash highly skilled, and you are almost at mastery, you're not even, in fact, you don't even need to be near mastery. Once you start getting to the point whereby you have some, I mean, you are the, you are the go-to person for comms in an organization, there's a level of assertiveness that you need to have. And a lot of what I'm going to be sharing here, I think it's this is really targeted at comms professionals so that we all understand the kind of role that we are taking on. And it's, this is not, I'm not sharing here what is Shola's idea of how it should be. I'm telling you the way it needs to be done. You know, otherwise you really can't play that role. It's like, for instance, when somebody is a safety officer in an organization, if you're a safety officer and you cannot be assertive when people are breaking the safety rules. You have no business being a safety officer. Please tell them to give you a job behind the desk where you are checking, you know, who is you know, other things. You know, you can't be because if you have to be an enforcement officer, it's just like police officers on the road. A police officer has to be assertive. You know, he doesn't have to be a commissioner of police. He doesn't have to be the inspector general of police. He doesn't have to be the divisional police officer either. Just being a policeman on the beat. If you're not assertive, you can't enforce anything. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't maintain law and order. You, you are not even able to assess the situation and know where there is problem because you're not assertive. So that's the thing. There's certain kinds of rules that require a certain level of assertiveness. What you should not now be is, you know, take it to the extreme, which is what we find a lot of our police officers doing. But you cannot be timid as a police officer either. That's a very good example, I think. So just keep that in mind. There are certain kinds of job where timidity is okay you know, reluctance, you know, being that kind of reticent kind of person. Communications is not one of those kind of roles, particularly if you are somebody, you are a frontliner. If you are just somebody, even if, in fact, anybody in the comms team, really, I don't want, because sometimes what happens in comms is that, like me, the way I try to develop my teams when I had, you know, much bigger teams and even up till now is that I want the line of command to be able to follow. So if I am not around, the next person should be able to step in, the next person step in, step in. So 
we develop everybody with the intention that it may be possible that on a site at one, you know, the, the, all the next one, two, three, four levels may not be around. That fifth person should 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 know enough and should be confident enough to be able to stop things or say this is not the way this is should be. And not just be sitting there and allowing people to do or whatnot. And then at the point when the leader number one now comes, you now realize that, oh my goodness, there's a big problem. But the person after, oh, I didn't know, you know, no, 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 that, we can't do comms that way. We don't run, we don't run comms that way. So let's just go through it. So one of one of the reasons why, and I think this is just to really help us as comms professionals know why I always say we need to be assertive and understand it. It's the nature of the job for them. Of course, it's a balance. Doesn't mean you should be rude, you should be disrespectful, but you need to be able to stand your ground on certain things. At least, anyway, let me explain. So external perspective. A comms professional, a communications professional is the one that brings the external perspective in. in. When I say outside in, I mean a, a communications professional, you are the one that brings the perspective that is not apparent to everybody. So sometimes it may be an internal communications challenge whereby, okay, where there's a transition, there is something we're doing. There is recruit. Um, we have to like retrench people, or people need to leave, or there's a change of leadership. The comms person is the one that will bring the information, what staff are saying, into the conversation. You cannot sit there and be repeating management speak. If you are doing that, there's a problem. Your role is to bring in the external, so that when management is making their decision on how to manage this situation, they factor in both what the narrative and the sentiment into what they are doing, and the key messages that they come up with are such that it's taking into consideration the prevailing sentiment and the narrative that is emerging within the employee space. So your role is not to sit down there and be regurgitating what the managers and the GMs and the directors and the whatever are saying. No, even if they're all speaking, and most of the time, this is what happens. Management normally speaks in one direction, group think. Most managers, management teams, they are experts at group think. That's, that has been my observation. I It's very rare I see a management team <laughs> A team that has diversity of thought. Most of the time, they all think the same way. So if you as comes, the comes the person comes in, and then you are mirroring that thinking, you might as well not be there. So you have to be assertive enough, confident enough to bring in that perspective. And like I said, you know, I, I God bless the leader who taught me this. He said, "Look, decision makers will make their decision, but your role is to share your perspective." So that perspective is what nobody can take from you. And it must be a well thought through perspective. It's also not a perspective. It's not gossip. It's not, you know, but then you are sharing perspective. You must be confident enough to bring it into the conversations where it's necessary, even if it is not welcome, even if it is um, argued against, even if it is not popular, even if it is the only one, you must have that confidence. So the assertiveness to, to, to say those things in places where they may not want to hear it, that is why. Otherwise, you can't do comms. And this comes out a lot in crisis management, in issues management. Many times, management management has a blind spot. So most of the time, you are the one that has to say what they, they would rather not hear or they do not want to believe. So bringing it, having the confidence to bring it in, you know, knowing where to get the kind of information that would provide credibility to what you're saying and be able to make them at least consider this perspective that you're bringing in. All of that is, it goes into that space of being Assertive. Perhaps I should also have taken a definition of what it means to be assertive. Maybe I'll get that up right now and then read it out. Now, um, I checked the Oxford um, Dictionary definition of assertive, of the um, adjective assertive. And I kid you not, this is what came out. It says, it means having or showing a confident and forceful personality. It now gives you know an example of how the word assertive can be used. And it says the job may call for assertive behavior. Can you imagine? The example they even gave tallies exactly to what I was saying. This is amazing, you know. The job may, and that's it. So certain roles you need to be assertive. It's not, it's not about being disrespectful. And that's why I believe that some you know communications professionals, particularly in the political space, are very ineffective because the assertiveness that they need to be able to go head to head with their principles and say, no, Oga, this will not work. This is the way we should do it. They they mean they are not able to do that. So most of the time, they just fold and they do exactly what they're told. And in fact, you know, there's a backlash, it does, and then everybody's blaming the social media is blaming this one. Whereas the point was that you as the prof uh, professional uh, communication professional, you were not assertive enough about 
your perspective. Maybe you didn't even have that perspective. So there's just a lot that we need to talk about there, but let me just keep that at that because I could go on and on on this. But anyway, let's go on to the next one and then I'll try and provide a bit more context as to how this plays out and why this is important. So the next um, aspect, sorry, this needs to move a little bit, okay, is subject matter expertise. This is very much linked to what I had said uh, earlier. So when you are a subject matter expert, in other words, this I know my stuff, so you know what I mean. You are the one that has the knowledge, whether it's about issues, management, crisis, management, stakeholder management comes, you know, uh, message writing, press releases, you know about the sentiment of social media, you should be confident and be able to say, no, this will not fly. We can't say this like this. And, you know, these messages I always talk about the courage of conviction. I think a lot of professionals, when you cannot be passionate about or assertive about what you're saying, people don't take you seriously. They assume that you're just making a suggestion. You know, the seriousness of it doesn't come through. Again, I like to give the example of a safety officer, you know, a compliance officer. You can't, these are rules that you cannot do without some level of conviction and assertion and say, this is wrong, and you know it. In fact, most of the time, like I worked in a, an organization where we had compliance officers, even when they're talking to senior leaders, they speak with the same tone because they are experts in this area. When it comes to the business, yes, they cede it to you, you are the decision, you know, but on this compliance, I will tell you, these are the rules. The same thing, if you are a tax expert, you have to be assertive and tell them that, no, there are tax implications to what you're doing. We can't do it this way. And if, but depending on the kind of tax exposure that you see, if you see that the organization is still going ahead, you know, disregarding your advice, you may even need to tell them to put it in writing. If you know that it's something that can cause backlash, you know, from the board and things like that. But you cannot be, if you are an expert in that area, again, I, I, I'm choosing my words clearly, carefully here, which is why I use, I change it to highly skilled communications professionals because if you are the sub in this environment, you are the one that has the expertise. There is no other expert in the room. Then you had better be assertive because I don't understand why non-experts would be overriding what you're saying. And they could, do you understand? Because sometimes business is, okay, Shala, we've heard you, but this is the business imperative. John, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't mean that I will not have had my say. And it cannot be like you are overriding me every single time. <laughs> you know, my perspective, no, then there's a problem. There's really a problem. But even if I'm being overridden, in fact, there are only two things I can think of that will make somebody, a business leader override my perspective. Is either one, I do not understand the business, I do not understand the context, but I'm missing something. There's just a whole lot of information that I'm missing. Because otherwise, my advice should be relevant to the context. So if it happens over and over again, maybe it's time for me to sit down with the business leader and try to understand what am I missing here? Maybe when I understand that context, then I will not also, you know, be giving advice that is out of sync, which is why, again, as a professional, the most important thing is understanding the business knowledge and the context. That doesn't mean the principles of the practice will change, but it just means that, you know, what you are speaking to and the way in which you speak to it, um, it, it, it may, may be more, you know, you may have to tweak it a bit to make it relevant. But also the ethics of the profession shouldn't change. What is wrong is wrong, like in tax. What is wrong in tax law? Is wrong in tax law? What's so reputation management? What is wrong is wrong. Telling a lie, not being transparent, hiding the truth, putting the blame on somebody else. Where it's you know, there's certain things that you should be able to say categorically. This is wrong. We cannot handle it this way. There's a better way in which to do this, and you have to be sometimes assertive about it. Particularly if the other side, the people who are who want to sway it the other way, are also being very assertive. But again, let me keep it there. So stakeholder knowledge. We are also the ones that understand how to manage stakeholders. And sometimes you need to be a bit forceful in how you communicate this across, particularly again, like I said, and this has been my observation. And, and when I, you know, I, I, whenever I say this, I, I see that communications professionals are very uncomfortable. They're like, you know, inshallah. So I'm like, so all of you timid in your roles. <laughs> how do you get, I don't know how you get the job done. I see so much timidity. Everybody's always uncomfortable when I say they're like, no, you know, and I'm like, so how do you get the job done? Maybe this, this is why we have no respect in this profession. That's why we have no respect. Because everybody is timid. You, you can't do this job being timid. You can't. Because many times the business will want to do things that is not in their interest to do. And you have to be able to say it. 
So when you, if you know that you are the one that you understand how to manage stakeholders and you know that what they are planning to do is going to backfire, you have to be forceful in how you say, no, we can't do it. But then you don't just say no, you tell them how, you provide a solution and you're ready to put your money behind it. And again, sometimes you, you may be overruled and also you, you, if, if they say they're not going to manage it that way, so long as they're not going to do something unethical and they're not telling you to lie through your teeth and that kind of stuff, you can still go ahead with it. I mean, you still go ahead with it. But then if it turns out wrong, please do not hesitate to come back and tell them this is what, you know, I told you so. So reputation risk. If you are also the professional that knows how to manage reputation risk, there's nobody else there that can claim to have that expertise. You need to be forceful about it, particularly when you have identified the reputation risk. Now, this is the thing. There are very few business leaders or organizational leaders that know when there is a reputation risk at stake. Again, I say this because I have worked with a lot of leaders. Many of them underestimate things. They overlook a lot of things. So many times it is me that I'll be like, no, there is a risk here. And what is risk? Risk does not mean something will happen. What should I just say? There's a risk. For instance, why do you have fire extinguishers in your house or in any facility? You're not praying for fire. I mean, by all your electricals and everything should be safely wired. So you're not planning for it. But then, because it is a risk, maybe from another, you know, I mean, God forbid somebody else's house or somebody did something they shouldn't have done. Let us at least have something that we can, a first line of action before we start calling for this or that. So that's it. And it's a safety officer that helps you identify that risk. Do we have emergency numbers? Do we have um, fire extinguishers? Are there smoke detectors in the room? So that's, that's it. So the reputation communications professional is the person that also does that on-site assessment in any situation and then bubbles up the risks and then tells the organization what they can do to manage it. It doesn't mean that it's going to the risk is going to emerge. But what we're saying is that this is a potential risk. So you And for me, it's like when you're a communications professional, you need to make your presence felt. Otherwise, there's no point in being there. So brand equity, we are also the custodians of the brand. Of course, the CEO is also the primary custodian of the brand, but we are the ones that develop subject matter expertise in how that brand is, is, is illustrated, is expressed, the attributes, how you know people experience and what the touch points are. So many times um, in making sure that you protect that brand equity, you build it and you nurture it, you sometimes have to be very, very assertive about how you put it up. Of course, if you have a situation where your senior leaders are already in tune in that regard, you may not really have too much work to do. But most of the time, you may just, you may not have to be that assertive. But depending on the kind of organization you find yourself, um, you you probably may, sometimes you may need to be more assertive. So assertive just means, like Oxford Dictionary said, being confident and sometimes forceful, <laughs> pushful, you know, in a very respectful, calm way. But then, you know, courage of conviction, I like using that word. Now, gatekeeper role. Now, this one here, this is where the, the level of assertiveness really comes in. Because what I observed in my life, in my working life when I was, you know, underpaid employment was that if you ever, particularly in a large organization, if you're not assertive in this role of gatekeeper for internal communications or media relations or anything, you will, the, whenever the problem comes, that's when they will remember that you are the gatekeeper. Do you understand? When they want to make the decision about what you should write, what you should put in there, they are, they are ready to overrule you. But when there's a backlash, that is when they remember that, hey, and Shola, you were here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, because I know, once I observe that behavior, that people would put pressure on you and tell you to put things and argue over the, the words you're saying, but that when there was a backlash, nobody, not legal, not business leader, nobody was ever ready to own up whenever there was a problem. They would pour it on communications. That then gave me courage. I said, okay, since it is me you are going to blame, then I will make sure that nothing goes out past this gate of internal comms or media relations until I am convinced that it is the right thing to say now to this set of these people at this time. If you would overrule me, then let it be on record that you overruled me. And in that case, that means that if anything then happens after that, then it's it's clear, you know what I mean? So, um, and many times I had to enforce this gatekeeping rule. And many, in fact, particularly on internal comms, um, I noticed that whenever I had to stop a notification, I would say this notification cannot go out. Many times it ended up not going out. By the time it was then sent back and my feedback about it was communicated to the businesses or the functions who wanted to say that, they would not be like, wow, on second thoughts, actually, then they would change it. Sometimes they would delay it, you know, that kind of thing. So I would be like, my goodness, supposing I was just a rubber stamp and said this thing, this is how this thing will have caused chaos. Because many times, and this is the thing, this is why communications belongs with professionals. 
many times they do not consider the the unintended consequences that their messaging can bring. They don't think about it, which is why, again, back to number four, reputation risk. Sometimes it may even be business risk. Sometimes it may even just be threats to stability, disorganizing the organization, I mean, dis disorienting the organization. So, in fact, a, a, a large percentage of my work was really is really identifying risk, communications risk, stakeholder man and risk, um, reputation risk. Sometimes brand association risk, you know, which is why, like, even if you are using, you're working with partners or influencers, you know, you make sure there are certain people you don't work with. So that was my role. And that's the role. And you have to be assertive. When people are saying, let's say, no, 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 we can't invite this guy. See the kind of post he puts on his social media. This does not fit with our brand. You, you don't say such things nice. <laughs> You're allowed. You have to be assertive. You know, they rush, rush, um, run rush shot over you. Now, a good example for those of us who may be Nigerians, haven't you noticed that whenever, like our, you know, the last um, um, political leaders, leadership that we had, and to some extent this current one as well, you know, the, the nobody blamed the president for the kind of messaging that came out. It was his spokespeople that got all the blame. Nobody blamed him. Whereas it became clear the, the two times the one or two times he did, you know, interviews, it became clear that they were probably the tone, you know, they were they were taking with the citizenry was probably supported by him. But because it was coming from these individuals, signed by these individuals, they 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 have kept the blame. So be aware as a comms professional, particularly when you're working in a high impact, high profile, um, political, public facing space. Nobody's going to believe that it was your boss that made you do. They're just going to think, but if they, you know, you, you really don't know what you're doing. So protect your own personal reputation as well. You know, I'm not saying that that should be your concern, but then, yeah, professionalism. You, you, your life will continue after this current job. So make sure that whatever it is, as much as possible, it is the positives that come. You know, you have positive things to take on, and not you know negative baggage where you can avoid it. And of course, for me, ethics are the most important thing. So as a comms professional, in fact, this is the number one reason why you need to be assertive because otherwise there are business leaders who will tell you to do some things that are very wrong. You know, there are people who will tell you to do that. And as a comms person, you also have to, I mean, I, I always tell people, I don't belong in that school of thought that everything that your boss tells you to do, you must do. I mean, they're really, if it does, they tell you to harm somebody, will you harm that person? You know, so we all need to have ethics as a person. I don't want to hear that, oh, I have bills to pay. I, it means you are an unethical person normally, and all you need is a little bit of incentive. Yeah, so someone can come to you too and say, come and be part of my Ocean's Eleven. Let's go and, and you know, heist, you know, take out some diamonds from one article. You, you, yeah, 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 game, you know, so that, yeah, hey, so let's, let's be clear here. Yeah. Because I always remember the story on ethics issue. I always remember the story of the people who got stuck, I think it was Mount Everest or something. And then, you know, some of them, they then decided that if one person passes on, you know, they would, whether they should cannibalize the person. And the one person decided that he wasn't going to do that. And he decided to keep on walking and walking and walking, you know. And so what I'm trying to say is that in very extreme situations, two people will handle it differently. One person will think of saving himself first. The other person will be like, you know what, I would like to save myself, but I, that I, not at the expense of other people. So it comes down to personal values as far as I'm concerned. I do not believe in that do everything that your boss tells you to do. No, no. Otherwise, you might as well be working for a drug push. That means you can work for anybody on the planet. Any, you can do anything. There's a problem with that kind of mentality. So number seven, influence and impact. The ability to influence and secure internal alignment and influence decision-making. So that is it. I mean, in the boardroom, have you ever seen anybody in the boardroom who is, if you're not assertive in the boardroom, you don't belong on the board. You have no business being there. And most of the time, depending on the kind of company you are supporting, you as a comms personnel, personnel, you may sometimes need to talk to not 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 maybe the CEO. Of course, you should be dealing with the CEO, who is a member of the board. So your arguments must be convincing enough to hold water at board level. So if you are already looking tentative in what you are saying, who is going to carry that wishy washy argument into the boardroom? Nobody's going to do that. So I'm not saying braggadocious, you know, braggado uh, to be braggadocious, where, whereby you're just being confident when there's nothing. So I'm talking of courage of conviction, backed up by expertise, knowledge, and the way in which things work. So you are sure of what you're saying. There's evidence behind it. There's understanding behind it. And you are not reluctant 
or reticent to put it forward. So you are able to influence and secure internal alignment and influence decision making. That's our role. Communication, so you cannot influence the decisions that are being made about the brand, the reputation, the communication strategy of the company. Honestly, you don't belong there, particularly when you're at this particular senior level or mid-career level, or you are the most senior comes person in that organization. You have to be able to influence. And if you're not able to, these are things that can be taught, like I've talked about. Um, we have, for instance, courses where we... So our strategic communications course, for instance, we talk about this sort of things. I think module five and six, we talk a lot about best practices, being, being assertive in your role and all of that. Um, so finally, initiative and autonomy, critical thinking, problem solving, these are all necessary for success. And there's a level of confidence. Remember what the Oxford Dictionary definition of assertiveness said? It says confidence and being pushed for. So a lot of that, you can only be confident when you have been able to think through. Your, your thinking is solid. People can follow your logic. Anybody can be like, yeah, this makes sense. And then you are, you're coming up with a solution. So you're not just saying no, 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 but you're saying no, but we can do this, no, but, or yes, and we can do this, you know, that kind of thing. And you are taking initiative, you know, even when maybe they throw out your initial solutions, you are coming back. It doesn't, you're not that kind of person that after one meeting because they shut down one proposal, then after you're like, oh, I won't talk again. <laughs> now meeting. You know, if that's, it, mm -hmm, you don't belong in that space because you should be used to the pushbacks will come uh, and you take notice. If it was, you know, if there's anything you need to learn from that, learn, you know, from it, but don't hold back your professional advice at any point in time because that is why you're there. So initiative and autonomy, I think that's the last one. So um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. Please share, um, like, and subscribe our channel and share this video to anyone that you think would benefit from it. And also sign up for our courses. You can see the bit.ly link below, bit.ly backslash SAA 2024 course sign up and uh, look forward to seeing one of our classes. Thank you and watch out for the next video as well.